I'm going to trim my plates. So it's uh, been a couple days. I haven't had a chance to get back to them. So I'm back at the wheel, finally. My plates have been under plastic. And I think they're in pretty good shape. So let's see. Yeah. So they hold their shape. You can see that. And they're a nice leather hard all the way through. I've kept them covered so the rims are st still nice. Now, whenever you move a plate, make sure you flip it really carefully. And the best way to flip it is with another bat. Take one hand on one side, one on the other, and flip. Now I've got all this extra clay here. I can scrape that off now and use it again. I'm in conservation mode for my clay. I don't know when I'll be able to get fresh, so. And a good way to recycle this is before you squeeze it all up or let it dry out, just dip it in some water and squeeze it out and let that water absorb. Now, I could trim this on the bat using some clay. I could also use a foam bat. And what a foam bat is, is just a bat that has a little thin piece of foam glued to the surface of it. And then I drew circles in it to help me center. And on something low and wide like a plate, it's not going to move. It holds still and I'll be able to trim right down to the edge. If you don't have one of those, you'll need to trim it on the wheel head or on another bat. So, let me flip it again and see where I need to trim. So, I have the plate curve ending right about here. So, I'm going to put my fingernail right opposite that. That'll tell me where the foot ring's going to be. And I'll move in a little bit and trim the foot ring. Now, I also want to feel how thick the inside is. I've got a, ooh, almost half an inch, so I've got a lot to trim off of this one. Dampen a little bit. And flip it. Find the holes. Find the bat pins. There. Got it. So, first of all, I have to center it, of course. I'm just going to push it towards the center. comes around towards me and when it comes closest I stop the wheel and push it a little bit towards the center. A little bit more, a little bit more. It's very hard to see if the wheel's not going at a decent speed. You can really see it when it's moving like this. And you really can't see it very well if it's going slowly. So. coil and stick the plate down. Now it's low, low and wide so you don't need a big piece. Longer might be a little bit better. And three pieces are just fine. Hold the piece down and push the clay down against the bat. Now it's important the bat be slightly dampened. That way the clay is going to stick and hold the piece in place. Now 
Now there are different trimming tools you can use. There are little larger ones. There's a smaller one. This is another kind of trimming tool. And I always use a stick. And to finish off, I use a little door key card or credit card or gift card. I'll start by marking where that line is. There's my mark that I put with my finger. Draw a line. Draw a second line. Now, this outside edge may be irregular, so start above it. And trim down. This clay is just perfect for trimming. See how it's just peeling off. And I want to get a little bit more. I'll go for a little larger tool. Oh, that's better. Now look how my arms are supported, my hands are supporting, and I'm even resting my fingertip on the pot. I have control of the tool. This is when you have to remember what the inside of the plate looks like. You know, we're going to a slight curve down there. So I'm just going to try to follow that inside contour. So when I finally take this off, the wall should be even except for where the bump is of the foot. Remember, you don't want this foot ring in here because the clay does get soft in the firing and it will collapse on you. Keep it out where the transition is from the wall to the bottom of the plate. Okay, I've got it kind of roughed out now. Now I'm going to go in and expose the foot. Now I'm going to tap it to see how thick it is. I'm going to go from the outside into the inside. Or the center to the outside. Now my plate has a slight curve on the inside. It just curves up ever so slightly. And there's a reason for that. It helps keep it flat. If you have a very flat bottom on your plate and you glaze one side and not the other, it can bow up from the tension of the glaze. And another thing that I've done is I haven't touch the very top edge of the foot. I'm going to leave that to the very end and that way I know this will be the highest point and this will be lower and I'll be able to glaze the inside. This is when you have all kinds of options for feet. I like to support the plate well so it'll be wider where it is against the plate and narrower where it hits the table, so you have less space. I'm going to switch tools, go with this little smaller tool, so I have a little more control. And then trim down and expose that foot. Bring it in. A little bit more here. Okay, I've got the plate trimmed. Finished foot. I'm going to just trim just a slight bit off the very top just to smooth it off and bevel those edges, round the edges on the top of the foot. 
Now, one thing that I do is I'll burnish it a little bit. This clay has some grog in it, which means when I trim, little pieces will come out and leave little pits, tiny holes. So by coming back at the very end and burnishing with a card like this, smooths it off and compresses it. And gets rid of those little holes. Another thing I do to make it a little bit easier when it comes time to finish the plate, to glaze it, I put a little incised line at the transition between the body of the pot and the foot, and then one right where I want the glaze to stop. I'm putting the sponge on the piece first and then the stick, and that way it rounds out that little line. Uh, if you're planning to glaze, make sure there's a gap in there. And a good gap that's larger and thicker than the glaze is going to be. Because remember that bottom could slump down a little bit and you don't want to stick the middle of the plate. Sign. Clay off. Ball it up. And clean surface. This is a clean foot. I don't want to mess that up, so I'm putting it on the clean side. Some people even put it on a piece of newspaper. Take it, hold it on both sides, and then flip it. Now, before you put it away to dry, pick it up very carefully. Try to tr pick it up evenly and feel it. See if it is the right weight. Trust yourself on that because if it's heavy, you'll know it. And you don't want a huge, heavy plate. Also, you don't want it too thin. So, that's how I trim plates. Now, all these trimmings are still leather hard. So I can take these. I've got a lot of trimmings. When you make a plate, there's a lot of clay that has to come off. So I can take these, put them all together. Add a little water and put them back together again. I have about a oh, pound, pound and a half of clay there. Now, before you squeeze it tight, what you want to do is dip it and squeeze it out. And what that does is it gets the water in between all the little spaces so you, it really gets it distributed well. In about half an hour, an hour, I'll be able to wedge this back up and use it again. Thanks.